Over the past two years, REIT share prices have crashed by about 40% even as most REITs kept growing their dividends. As a result, there are now many REITs that offer up to 8 to 12% dividend yields. Typically, such high yields are only offered by highly risky REITs that are over leveraged and poorly managed. But today is the exception. REITs have gotten so cheap that you can now earn such high yields even from high quality companies. According to a recent study by Principal Asset Management, which is one of the biggest investment firms in the world, REITs are today priced at their lowest valuations and highest dividend yields since the great financial crisis. So if you want to build passive income streams, now is the time to take a closer look at REITs. Hey everyone, this is Yossi, I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And in today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about three of the highest yielding REITs in my portfolio. On a side note, if you want to have access to my entire portfolio and all my transactions in real time, feel free to take a look at High Yield Landlord, my REIT newsletter. There's a two week free trial, I'll put a link to it somewhere in the description of this video. So the first REIT I want to discuss here is called New Lake Capital Partners, ticker symbol NLCP. This is one of just a few REITs that specialize in cannabis cultivation facilities. The other two are innovative industrial properties and power REIT. Over the past two years, its share price has crashed by nearly 60%, even as the REIT grew its dividend by over 10%. As a result, the dividend yield has now reached 12%, and that's despite being well covered with an 80% payout ratio. And the shocker here is that New Lake is one of just a few REITs that has no debt. In fact, it has a lot of cash today that represents nearly 15% of its market cap. And because the REIT is retaining a good chunk of its cash flow and has no debt, now it has recently turned to buybacks to take advantage of the discounted share price. Just recently, the company finished their $10 million initial share buyback plan and they immediately initiated a new one and the CEO issued the following comment. He said that we continue to believe that there is a compelling value in our stock and while we continue to have conviction around the cannabis sector, the opportunity to invest in our stock was particularly attractive. The authorization by our board of an additional 10 million under our share repurchase program allows us to continue to be opportunistic in stock repurchases while working to deploy additional capital into sale and leaseback transactions. So why is the stock so cheap then? I think that the first reason is simply an overreaction to rising interest rates. All REITs have crashed because of this, but the market appears to have overlooked the fact that New Lake has no debt on its balance sheet, and then on top of that, it's buying higher cap rate properties that are less sensitive to rising interest rates. And then the second reason why it's so cheap is because the entire cannabis sector is today out of favor. And so when you combine the REIT structure, which is today out of favor, plus the cannabis sector, it's not surprising that New Lake has seen its valuation drop very significantly. Today, some cannabis companies are facing some difficulties and in select cases this has led to late rent payments. But this is really nothing new. The cannabis sector is a higher risk, higher reward sector with high cap rates and strong rent escalations. You take risks to earn returns and it's inevitable that you occasionally run into tenant issues in the cannabis sector. But what the market appears to have overlooked here is that New Lake is specializing in properties that are located in limited license states. I think that this is a great risk mitigator because the license is tied to the property, the demand for cannabis is growing, but the supply of such properties is clearly limited. Therefore, even if you have an occasional tenant default, there should be demand for these properties and this should sustain their value over the long run. The public market doesn't like this bumpiness and this is the main reason why the stock is so cheap today. But if you're long-term oriented, I think that this is a clear opportunity because the stock is very heavily discounted, the management is buying back shares, the resilience of the company is underappreciated, and especially given that the company has no debt and a lot of cash on hand. Those who buy today also have the chance to lock a 12% dividend yield, and over time, I expect up to 50% upside as the company re-rates closer to our fair value. Hey, before I go into the second rate, could you please do me a huge favor and like this video? That'll really help me a lot to produce this content for you for free on this YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support. Then the second read I want to discuss is called EPR Properties, ticker symbol EPR. This is a net lease read just like Realty Income, which is one of the most popular reads in the world. But instead of investing in traditional net lease properties like CVS pharmacies, Dollar General grocery stores, 7-Eleven convenience stores, EPR is instead investing in experiential net lease properties such as movie theaters, golf complexes, and ski resorts. Its share price crashed at the onset of the pandemic and it has failed to recover ever since. But its business actually has has. Today, most of its tenants generate more profit than prior to the pandemic, and as a result, the rent coverage ratios of its leases are higher than ever. 
the only property sector that's still lagging behind are its movie theaters and this is the main cause of concern for EPR. Today, movie theaters represent about 25% of the company's portfolio as measured by its NAV and the market fears that these properties will never recover. I strongly disagree here and in fact I think that the recovery is now well underway. It's important to note here that EPR owns some of the most productive movie theaters in the entire nation and those are already profitable today at the property level. The rent coverage ratio is today still low at 1.3 times which may seem really risky but with the recent successes of Barbie and Oppenheimer we think that this rent coverage ratio is going to recover from here. The pandemic was of course a severe crisis for movie theaters and it actually caused many of them to even close down but these were mostly low quality theaters and what the market appears to have overlooked here is that when the low quality theater closes down it actually benefits the higher quality theaters such as the one owned by EPR because it leads to traffic consolidation from the lower quality quality theaters to the higher quality ones. I would even go a bit beyond that and even say that the pandemic proved that high quality theaters are here to stay for many decades to come. This is because major studios like Disney and Warner Bros now got to experiment digital strategies during the pandemic. They all failed and came back to the conclusion that theaters remain the best platforms to monetize new blockbusters. People simply aren't willing to pay as much for a movie when they watch it at home and at best if someone pays for it then the rest of the family and friends will watch it for free. And then on top of that as soon as you release the movie digitally it will get pirated and a lot of people will stream it for free. So the reality is simply that if you like block Buster movies like most of us do then movie theaters will be here to stay. Even Amazon and Apple recently announced that they will invest billions in the coming years to produce movies to be released at movie theaters. And the beauty here is that EPR is the triple net list landlord. This means that you don't have to be ultra bullish on movie theaters for EPR to do well. You just need to think that movie theaters will do well enough to be able to pay their rent to EPR properties. Given that the rent coverage ratios are already positive and are now increasing following the recent successes of these big movies, I'm quite confident that the tenants will be able to make their rent payments. Even then, EPR is today priced at a high 8% dividend yield. That's despite having a low payout ratio of just 66% and have it guided for 9% FFO per share growth in 2023. I believe that as the company keeps diversifying away from theaters and theaters continue their recovery, the company will eventually re-rate at a materially higher valuation. Today, it's still priced at just 8 times FFO. If it rises just to 12 times FFO, which will still represent a discount to most of its peers, that will unlock 50% upside potential from here. I think that the combination of a high yield, a low payout ratio, strong growth prospects and significant upside potential make EPR a great pick for most high yield seeking investors. And then the third REIT is called Healthcare Realty, its ticker symbol is HR. This is a high quality REIT that owns a portfolio of class A medical office buildings, it has a strong investment grade Reddit balance sheet and attractive growth prospects. But despite that its share price has crashed, it has dropped even more than the rest of the REIT sector and as a result its dividend yield has now expanded to around 9%. It has dropped so much because the market appears to put medical office buildings in the same category as regular offices. But in reality, medical office buildings are actually performing a lot better than offices in today's market. Healthcare Realty has actually guided for an acceleration in its same property NOI in the coming years and expect to be able to grow its FFO per share by over 5% in the years to come. There are three main reasons why the properties of Healthcare Realty are doing so much better than regular offices. The first one is pretty obvious, they have unique characteristics that serve a medical use. Today the population is aging rapidly and so the demand for such healthcare properties is rising. And while in some cases offices may be converted to medical office buildings, in most cases it is impractical or too expensive. The second reason why they are more resilient than regular office properties is because these are actually the profit centers of the tenants. They lease these medical office buildings and that's where they do their business and earn profits. That makes them a lot more dependent on these specific properties than the typical tenant of an office building because that's just their cost center. They could just move across the street and it wouldn't have such a major impact on their businesses. And then the third reason is that the properties of healthcare realty are located in medical clusters that enjoy high barriers to entry and they are in states that are enjoying rapid growth at the moment. For all these reasons we think that the market has gotten it wrong and the stock of healthcare realty has dropped way too much and it really shouldn't be valued as if it was an office rate. But despite that its valuation is today actually very similar to that of Boston Properties which is one of the biggest office rates in the US. It has a roughly 30 to 35% discount to NAV. I trade at about 8 to 9 times FFO. 
I think that this is a clear misplacing and as the company keeps proving the market wrong by growing its same property NOI in the coming years, we will eventually see it re-rate at closer to 15 times FFO, which would unlock about 50% upside potential from today's level. While you wait, you also earn a 9% dividend yield, which is today covered, but keep in mind that there is the risk that the company will decide to cut its dividend in order to prioritize buybacks and deleveraging. Obviously, all three of these companies present some risks and I describe those in more detail in our reports at High Yield Landlord, but it's the risk to reward that's so compelling here because valuations have gotten so low, dividend yields have gotten so high, and so I really like the risk to reward of these companies as part of a well-diversified portfolio. Now, finally, I wanted to remind you that you can actually access my entire portfolio for free with our two-week free trial at High Yield Landlord. This is a real free trial in the sense that you won't be charged anything in the first 14 days and you can cancel at any time, no question asked. So if you want to take a closer look at my portfolio and all my holdings, feel free to join us for a two-week free trial. I'll put a link somewhere in the description of this video. And then finally, once more, could you please like this video? That really helped me a lot to produce this content and grow the channel. Thank you so much for all your support and see you at my next one. Bye-bye.